What's the worst thing you have ever done to an annoying neighbor? My dad was talking to our neighbor about what color he should paint the house and said. As a joke well I might as well paint the old one house blue haha. The neighbor became almost angry and said stuff like you cannot do that. A blue house. How stupid and annoying. How dumb etc. And that's how I grew up in a blue house. Did it also have a blue window? Is blue the color you thought that you'd wear? In our first house. My wife and I had a neighbor who disliked us from the start. Apparently the people that lived there before us were family friends who went through a divorce and we were the ones who bought their house. They were petty and mean to my wife who doesn't like confrontation. Parking across our driveway when she about to go to work. Throwing pieces of wood over the fence. Letting their dog crap on our lawn and not picking it up. Etc. I tried talking to them a couple times too and was promptly told to f off. The husband loved his lawn care and used to brag about how it looked to everyone. So the next time it rained, I went out back and threw an entire box of Arxo cubes into their backyard and let the rain melt them into the grass. Their dog absolutely destroyed their yard looking for the smell and I would make sure to comment on it every chance I got. We moved shortly after. Edit spelling. What are Arxo cubes like DPG treats? Bouillon cubes. Sometimes also called stock pot or broth cubes. Basically dehydrated often beef broth stock condensed into a cube for cooking. They look like caramels, but they are not caramels. We lived in a neighborhood of townhouses. One neighbor let their dogs shit all over everyone's lawn and never picked it up. We tried asking them. We tried picking it up and putting it on their doorstep. They refused to do it. My one neighbor decided to get a piece of it and smear it all over the front of the house. After that, they started picking it up. I did something similar except my neighbor left his car window down. I had a grocery bag full and put it in his car. This was in the summer it was well over 100 degrees outside. His dog never pooped on my lawn again. When I was really young our neighbor druggie demanded we move our septic tank because he claimed it was partially on his property. He was a complete jerk about it and kept at it. My dad's a really laid back person. Eventually even he got mad and had the property line surveyed. Turns out not only was the septic tank on our property, not his, but the corner of his house and part of his driveway was actually on our land. Dad spent the next few months asking him when he was going to move his house off our land. I wonder if he legally could remove the section of house and driveway on his property. Probably not in the way you're thinking. But he would very likely have an action for conversion. Basically the most likely scenario is that he could take the other guy to court and get a judgment for the value of the land that was taken. The only problem at that point is getting money out of a drug addict. Not me, but my grandpa. My grandpa's neighbor's septic tank started leaking into my grandpa's backyard. He repeatedly asked his neighbor to fix the septic tank and clean up the mess in his yard. The neighbor completely brushed him off. So my grandpa took matters into his own hands. He rigged up a plumbing system in his yard. He installed an upright PVC pipe that pointed at the neighbor's backyard over the fence. I don't know how the system worked I was only about 8 years old. In the early 90s. But it was set up to spray the neighbor's own septic waste over the fence and into the neighbor's beautiful and polished yard. And just like that, the neighbor fixed his septic tank. They remained enemies until my grandpa died a couple of decades later. I miss that old crazy bastard. Never piss off the grandmas and grandpas. They will get back at you in a way you'll never expect. My mom's neighbor called the city to demand they make my mom repair her fence that divided their yards. This lady has always been a crab apple for 10 plus years, but this move pissed my mom off. The fence did need a few mild repairs, which my mom would have done if the neighbor had just come talk to her she was already in the process of getting quotes. The city contacts my mom and says you have to maintain your fence. My mom asks if she legally has to have a fence and the person she talked to could sense where this was going. Turns out there are rules about maintaining a fence, but not requiring you have one. So my mom pays a contractor to tear it down entirely. The neighbor does come to talk to my mom and asks when the new fence will be built. My mom says you want a fence. Build it yourself. Couple weeks later my mom has a nice new fence. Courtesy of one annoying neighbor. A little petty. Perhaps. 
but hilarious nonetheless. This is the grown up version of your mom telling you to do the dishes while you were on your way to do the dishes. But instead of just finishing the dishes, you smash them all and your mom has to regrettably replace them all. Not my story, but a friend of mine. Let's call him John. Had a neighbor. Let's call him David. That would siphon gas out of everyone's vehicles. Nearly all of John's neighbors had cameras. So they knew who it was. But couldn't get the guy to stop. John went to the store to purchase a locking gas cap. And while there had a bit of a light bulb moment. He decided to buy one for David's car instead. John waited until he was asleep about 9 or m. Then installed the locking gas cap on David's car. Apparently. David flipped out and went door to door asking all of the neighbors he knew had cameras to tell him who did it. Miraculously, everyone's camera failed to work that day. John said the car sat up for about a week before David was able to remove it. After realizing how much his neighbors hated him, David decided to move. I had a terrible work schedule and had to wake up at 2.30am to be at work by 4am. My downstairs neighbors would play loud music at all hours of the night, and I could feel the bass through my mattress. I went downstairs and politely asked them to turn down the music, and they seemed to kindly agree. As soon as I got back in bed, they turned it up even louder and kept it going until about 1.30 am. Before I left for work at 3.30, I turned over my amplifier so that the speaker was facing the floor, turned the volume up and set my guitar on top of it. I left for my 12 hour shift, and the feedback was still screaming when I came home. Neighbors never blared their music again. Here to say that this exact situation has happened to me, and that is also exactly how I dealt with it. Sometimes you have to fight fire with fire. People don't always respond well to kindness. I had a noisy neighbor in the apartment above me when I went upstairs to address it. The music was so loud in the hallway that I couldn't tell which unit it was coming from. I finally did. Knocked on his door and politely asked him to turn it down. He refused. I told him that I have a right to live in my space without hearing his noise. He informed me that he paid the same rent as me and had a right to play music. I knew I wouldn't get anywhere with him. After a few more days of this, I decided to take action. Each floor had a laundry room. The one on my floor had all of the electrical panels for individual units clearly labeled. Every time he blasted his music, I would go to the laundry room and turn his power off. I started off with a few seconds to give the illusion that he blew something, but when he still wouldn't put his music lower, I would just shut his power off for hours. I could hear him swearing, but I didn't care. My lease was almost up, and as soon as it was, I was out of there. Even complaining to property management does nothing. They just want the income and could care less about terrible occupants. I had a barracks room that I used to do similar with. She had this habit of leaving her TV or music on and leaving. Loud enough I could understand what was being said. One time she was gone for a week. About 3 days and it occurred to me. We had the break box in our common area. It got to the point that if I didn't see her car in the parking lot. I would just flip the breaker. Trying to talk to her about things never went anywhere. I decided to fence in my backyard and ask my neighbor if he would pay for half of the fence along his property line. He declined. I installed a fence around my backyard a few inches on my side of the property line. That neighbor then tied a new fence into my fence. He also tied into the neighbor's fence on the other side and the one behind his. So he only paid for about 40 foot of fence altogether and got his entire yard fenced in. Dick move. No big deal. Even though he got a few extra square feet of backyard and a free fence on three sides for free. Sometime later his dog knocked a hole in my fence. He asked me to fix it since his dog could escape to my yard and then into the neighborhood. I declined. I told him to fix it since it was my fence and his dog did the damage. He called code enforcement and the home me are one as association. Turns out that if I have a fence I have to keep my fence in good repair. I repaired the fence and then painted the side of my fence that faced his property highliner yellow, blue, green, mixed with slates of black, shit brown. Turns out I get to choose the color of my fence as long as it is in good repair. He complained and was denied by the hoe he then painted my fence. 
I had him change with vandalism, and he was fined, and had to repaint my fence the original terrible colors. He then bulk emailed the entire subdivision, and complained asking them to support him in his attempt to get me to paint my fence. Instead, the neighbor to his other side and behind him all painted their fences to match mine. He moved a few months later. He smeared his shit on my front door all because I was talking to his crush. Told the crush what he did and now he's known as the shit smearing pervert. Honestly not even bad at all. Just spreading true info. Friend had a neighbor who put in a very bright yard light that was pointed at her bedroom window. After a negative interaction when asking, neighbor to RA more dim the light or such. Q theater stage your hands. She put up a parabolic mirror pointed directly at dude's bedroom. Used an old projector dowser and an old lighting board to program a chase sequence that was hours long and repeated. End result was a beam of randomly blinking light that was aimed at neighbor's bedroom window. When he complained she let him know that it was his light source and all he had to do was turn off his yard light. My grandmother had a neighbor over her back fence who refused to help her repair the fence between their properties. It was still functional as a boundary line, but it was falling apart. Any conversation about fixing the fence ended with him saying that it was on her property, so it was her fence, and therefore she was fully responsible, which was fair. She took a fall and was hospitalized for a few weeks. Upon her return, she found a new fence built an extra 5 feet into her property and a bill in the mail from the neighbor. He argued with her for months that she owed him. That the original fence was on his property and that where it was now was the boundary line. My grandmother got a severe in surprise. The original fence was correct and the neighbor had taken 5 feet of her yard. At this point she was very old, frail, and tired of fighting her asshole neighbor. Instead, she let nature take over. She planted blackberries along the back fence, and within two years it was covered. Every year, she'd walk the fence and throw seeds over because of course, it was still her yard. After five years of fighting, the blackberries had reclaimed her property. She's been gone for a few years now, but the blackberries remain. Her way of haunting her neighbor. He's tried ripping up the ones on his side of the fence on numerous occasions, but the plants resid themselves and grow back every year from her side. Only a grandmother would fight back with doing gardening. Tactical berries. They assaulted my dad because he told them to stop yelling at a woman parked in the road. So I bided my time for a few weeks then filled all the locks on their work van with super glue. If they had power locks with a remote, they won't know until it's an emergency. Haha. <laughs> Neighbor's dog kept shitting in the front. Like they opened the front door let him out and he shit in our yard. I asked them like 10x to just clean it up no problem. They outright refused so for about 2 months I went out picked it up put it in a 5 gallon bucket outside in the backyard. When it was full of rain water and shit I walked over and dumped it on the front porch. It actually worked they started cleaning up after the dog. We actually have been cool since then. This one's not my story, but my great grandfather's. My great grandfather was one of the last people in town to get indoor plumbing, and as such, had an outhouse in his backyard. Every year on Halloween, neighborhood kids would come into the yard and knock over the building and expose the cesspit. He got tired of it. So one year, the night before Halloween, he moved the building forward, then covered the fess with burlap, disguising it in leaves and grass clippings. In the dark, it was almost impossible to tell it was there. Halloween night. He sat in the outhouse and waited. It wasn't long after sundown when he heard the wet splat outside as a couple of kids fell into the muck. He lowered a ladder into the cesspit for them to leave after making them promise to never mess with his outhouse again. The kids honored their promise and even spread the word around the neighborhood not to mess with that outhouse anymore. Poured a bunch of boxes instant mashed potato powder on their lawn so later when it rained they had a lawn full of mashed potato. In college I lived across from a frat house that would let people park in our spaces. Their router password was admin. So I logged into their router, banned all of their MAC addresses, and changed the password. Had a neighbor in my apartment complex that kept letting her huge dog take huge shits in my yard space. Literally got to about 20 huge dog shits sitting outside my window, and I had enough. 
put on a glove and picked up all the shit and dumped it on her doorstep. Left a note stabbed into the ground telling her to pick up her dog shit. She started picking up the shit and moved pretty soon after lol. Edit funny addition to this story is that it was actually two dogs and two women. They lived together. Looked similar and had two big golden doodles. So they were both letting their dogs shit in front of my apartment for weeks. That explains why it was such a large amount of shit. 